is your emergency broadcast system. You are listening to the hashtag This with the Beer Podcast. Business that you never heard before. Now, belt up and shut up. It's going to be Welcome, friends, once again to the show where we say what we want to say. This is the 50th episode. That's right, the 50th episode of the business podcast that is authentic, shameless, unapologetic, and raw. This is the hashtag biz with the beard podcast, business as you've never heard before. And I'm your host, the guy who has a beard because the science says you should have one. And we all listen to the science, right? I am the beard, Kirby Smith. As always, I want to give a sincere shout out to all of our listeners and now viewers. I'm truly appreciative of you all and the support you have given to me and the show. And if you enjoy today's episode, which I know you will, please subscribe on one of the many platforms such as Apple, Google, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Pandora, or whatever the hell you listen to. Um, If you like the show and got something out of it, please give it a five stars and just remind all your friends and connections on your social media pages to listen and subscribe as well. And as many of you have just heard earlier, I did say viewers, and that means the hashtag biz with the beard podcast is now on YouTube as well. So you can watch this show on in its entirety uh, on YouTube, our new YouTube channel. So go out to YouTube, subscribe, give us a thumbs up and leave a comment and share it with your friends. I'm really trying to organically grow this because I'm so damn cheap. So I need your help. Um, anyway, <laughs> So let's get into today's guest. All right. Today's guest is a master life and financial coach from the state of Florida. Is that right? I got that right, right? You got it. Okay. All right. Her specialty is in helping solopreneurs exceeding six and seven figures. Her secret? Master, market, and monetize. I really like that. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I'm pleased to have on the show from from Florida, Sherry Summers Unlimited, Miss Sherry Summers. Sherry, welcome to the hashtag Biz with the Beard podcast. Oh, awesome. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, thank you for coming on. I'm excited to have you. And like you said, I'm, I'm very excited that you're excited. So I'm, I'm, I can't wait to get into this. All right. But before we start the show, I have to kind of give the weekly beard fact, right? Since, you know, it is hashtag biz with the beard and I don't have my old uh, co-host on here who kind of razzes me about my beard. I said, well, you know, just some guy talking with the beard about business, right? You know, that's kind of boring. So I figured let's make, let's get some weekly facts about beards and why they're so great. So I would, the fact this week is, did you know that an 11 year old convinced President Abraham Lincoln to grow a beard. If you remember when he was in politics prior to him being president, he didn't have a beard. So as legend has it, 11 year old girl, and her name was Grace Bedell from New York, drafted up a letter and sent it to President Lincoln, suggesting that his appearance would just benefit immensely from growing a beard, which I think we all agree. So after receiving that note, the, the president, you know, President Lincoln obviously uh, thought that The little 11 year old girl had some excellent advice and he started growing out his beard in late 1860. So did you know that? Wow. (laughs) Interesting. That's awesome. Yeah, off from 11 year old girl. Too bad she didn't have any advice on where to sit in the theater. That would have been a lot better, right? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Was that that a little too bad? (laughs) No. (laughs) So Sherry, you have a degree in criminology, right? I was, I've been doing a lot of studying on you. And uh, so tell me about that path. And why don't you do it anymore? And has that path helped you with what you do today? Awesome. First of all, I'm excited to be here again. It's your girl, Sherry Summers. I'm your revenue master life coach. Look at that. And one of the one of the reasons I got a degree in criminology, well, first of all, I'm, I'm, I'm in Florida. I'm in this local area. I'm originally from Jamaica. I'm Jamaican and Chinese. Nice. So if you haven't picked that up, so the accent you're going to hear is originally from Jamaica. And when I got my criminology degree, I was in law enforcement for 10 years. So I was a corporal in law enforcement. And during that process, uh, I used my law enforcement degree to help ex-offenders that are being released from jail to start their own business. So I saw a, a trend. I saw people was 
keep reoffending back and forth. And one of the reasons we're reoffending because they had a record and no one would hire them. Right. So I saw that little pain point that needed to be fixed. And while being in law enforcement, I would go into the jail and I would teach them strategies on how to become a real estate investor, how to start an own lawn service, how to start a con concrete business, along with get their GED as well. And I started that path because I was also taking classes with uh, Robert Kiyosaki, Rich Dad, Poor Dad author. I was yeah. in his that academy. So during I was taking what I was learning there and I would go into the jail <laughs> and I would teach it to the inmates. So when they're release, they can start their business. Because how often somebody come to you and said, hey, do you have a record to work with me, right? From a right. business standpoint, not really, right? Uh, and I he got lie. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm joking. laughs> He's honest. And he got so big that it became a re-entry program. It was called Get Her Done. And he got so big to the, in September 2016, I got a call from President Barack Obama's assistant that they're, I mean, being invited to the White House because of starting that reentry program, which is bigger than it, than it is today. So, <laughs> you got invited, I, so you got invited to the White House, huh? Correct, correct. For starting to re wow. helping this part of that reentry program of cool. making well, them become taxpayers again. Cool. That, that, that's an excellent program. So was that a program, was that initiative just done by you or is that an initiative done by the government or is it something you said, hey, this is what I recognize. You went to, you know, your superiors or what have you and said, can we start this program? Or did you just say, you know, I'm doing it. I don't give a rat's ass. I'm going to do it. Myself. I love that. I love that. Well, it takes a community because, right? So when they're released, they still need community people on the outside, like churches and career source and different places. So it was a community effort. And, but the fact that I was already in the jail and I can see from both sides, I, um, one of the things that I did, we have a reentry program, but it wasn't picking up any traction. It was just kind of like going in there trying to do mindset, you know, mindset only gets you so far without action. So I decided that, listen, that's great and all, but let me go ahead and take some, they, one thing I would say, the sheriff at the time, trust me enough to where he like, do your thing, girl. <laughs> Nice, and nice. Then, so I decided, like, listen, the, you, and I'm big on entrepreneurship because I already had a property preservation business myself. So I said, you know what? Let me take the stuff that I'm learning and just put it in there. So we already had a reentry program, but the value of what it was teaching was not there. So I inputted my own value of the reentry program. And they were coming out with their GED, starting business, becoming taxpayers. And it just, just got so big because the results were just so amazing. That's awesome. So did you go to the White House then? Did you meet President? Correct. Yes. Did you meet yes, President Barack did. Obama? So quick fact here. There's something you and I have in common. We have both met President Barack Obama in, in person. <laughs> There you go. Wow. So yeah, so it, we, it was like seven of us that went and to this day, they still have the reentry program It's still going on. I myself awesome. has left from the white. Probably, I myself has left that really took off so big that I left and started my own entrepreneurship program. So absolutely. What so what do you think it was going to be like when you met the president? What was it actually like? Well, when we got there, we didn't, that's the thing, we didn't get to, to do the things we wanted to do because that, if you guys recall, that was the New York bombing. There was a bombing in New York. When he was oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the same time. So it was like a rush. He was off to that. So I didn't get to the moment that I wanted to get just because we got the call when we were there in the, yeah. at the White House. Like, oh my God, this is happening. And of course, that was first priority, not Sherry. Right? So, uh, but I, don't, the I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the experience and, and we got the tours and the place that we were able to enter just, just to say thank you for, you know, here's this girl, local girl from this local area yeah. decided yeah. to do something different. And I just appreciate it because it really skyrocketed my business as well. Yeah, I met him back in, uh, gosh, what year was that? It was probably like 2000, I think 2009. And he came to my hometown of Peoria, Illinois at the time. Actually, it was East Peoria that he was in. And I was I was in politics at the time. And um, I, I'm, uh, I'm on the other side of the aisle. I don't know if I'm really on the other side of the aisle. I'm, I think I'm more in the middle. Um, but at the, at the time, I wasn't on, the, on his side of the aisle. But, you know, it's the president of the United States. I don't care who it is. And I was it like, is yeah, correct. yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, yeah, I respect the president, that office. And I was like, yes, I'm going right. to go shake his hand and meet him. And, you know, uh, you know, and to me, that's that's just a great honor. You know, yes. we can have, we can have, we can, 
we can have differences. That. Yeah, we have differences, but man, that's just, a, it's a high honor for anybody to get to that point. And, uh, you know, a leader of the free world, um, that, that's just an amazing. So it was, it was great. It was a great experience for me. Got to meet him, got to shake his hand. Um, he was a lot skinnier than I thought he would be. <laughs> so, uh, but it, cool. It was a great, great, great experience. Um, and, and the community loves it. It's changing, you know, the reentry program is changing a lot, but that's where my first entrepreneurship started. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, let, let, yeah, let's get off. Uh, I don't, let's not go in the politics rabbit hole. <laughs> I'm going to take us down a bad path. Um, how, so, but I want to talk about the program. So, how did it feel when you helped a former inmate find some success, whether it be like a new job or a, a, just a new outlook on life? Wow. So, you know what's funny? Um, I exit the law enforcement area and decided to go out on my own when my son got sick so i knew i, I got pushed i say either god got to, you're gonna jump or god gonna push you and he pushed me when my son got sick at school so i needed to be home more and i will tell you this even now when i go to my church and i, I work the welcome center i volunteer at the welcome center there's always an a release inmate or ex-offender when i say ex-offender like we're talking about people who didn't pay the child support we're not talking about like you know people who commit right. sex crime, none of that stuff, low, low rate in, uh, inmates. And when they will come up to me, they still to this day come up to me and say, I got my GED through you. Hey, I'm in college or, Hey, my business is booming. And it feels really good till this day, you know? So there's a lot of stuff that you can't take with you. So while you're here on earth, I truly believe right. that this is the impact that we should be making. Absolutely. Can you share an example of one that moved you the most? Um, Yes. Matter of fact, it, one of them just last week, she came up to me. And she said, you look so familiar. Uh, you, I can say, well, maybe you didn't go to this school. Did you go to that school? I'm thinking. And then she said, well, I'm in the recovery class at church. And I said, oh, you know me from the jail. <laughs> She's like, yes, you yeah. gave me my GED. Then her fiance came up and said, hey, Corporal Summers, <laughs> which was my, <laughs> was my rank at the time. Uh, yes, I'm in, I have my, my own plumbing business. I got my GED and my plumbing license through you. I'm like, oh my goodness. So both are couples have kids live together but they're all were impacted through our program and That's they're fine story. and she came to me and tell me this is her one one year severity and i think his year his was like three years so it def it works if you work it definitely like yeah. anything else in life well in reading your bio and, and, for, and you can correct me if i'm wrong but you always seem to have a side hustle you know working something else and maybe had this, it just, I'm just reading and following you and doing this deep dive. And it seems you just have this drive for revenue. Where does that come from? Very good. I really think I love your podcast. It's always about being authentic. And one thing people will tell you is when you start a business, oh my God, you're going to make so much money. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> So you're like, man, I'm just, I'm going to start my life insurance business. And then you start your life insurance business and the, the policy is not being written. And you're like, what? They told me I was going to make a whole bunch of money doing life insurance. Then someone called you and said, no, the TLC business snap waistline business is working. You should come over here. Yeah. So you jump over there because you're thinking the life insurance business is not working. And you start jumping to all these different industry when in fact, it's not the industry. It's really your purpose, right? It's, it's mm -hmm. your purpose. So with me, I learned quickly that a business is going to take a while to get traction. So the goal is to create multiple stream of income within the existing in business, the existing yeah. business, not starting 10,000 business. So any given time where one business is not taking off or one income stream is not coming in, I guarantee you three or four of the income stream is working its way in as well. So I really quickly realized the pattern because as a single mom, because right after the whole hype of the White House, I got divorced. And as a single mom, I'm like, I was behind on my car payment, behind on my mortgage. I'm like, how am I going to make make this money up? So right. I had to create diff different multiple streams of income to get paid within my existing business. So my rent, light, mortgage, car payment, all that can still be paid. <laughs> right. No, that's awesome. That's awesome. So what do you say to people who say to you, they don't have it in them to do what you do or did? So what do I say to people who say they don't have it in them? Then they're yeah, not an entrepreneur. They, they say, yeah, right, <laughs> there you go. That's okay. okay. They're not, not everybody. Maybe, like, not maybe, well, maybe I should rephrase a little bit. Maybe someone's, you know, started their business and then they're struggling, right? 
mm-hmm. and it's just not working our route. And they just, you know, sure, I, I'm trying. It's just, I don't, I don't think I have it in me. You know, how, how do you, since you're a coach, what, what, what's the first thing do you say to them? How, how do you approach well, that? The first thing is what type of hat are they wearing when it comes to mindset, right? Because it's all, mm. about, all about mindset. Once your mindset is people think it's marketing or people think it's money is what made people successful. Let's reverse back. It's really the mindset, right? There are two yes. things that I'm always big on is having a fit mindset and a health and a fit body itself. And when I mean fit, I don't mean like healthy fit. I just mean like your body's your foundation. So if you want to go with the bandwidth of the day of running your yes. business, you need to have that health to be able to create a bandwidth, right? So the first thing is what par- what what lens are you looking at your business in? If you're looking at your business, oh, I just want to make some money. No, that's not what you're there for. But if you're looking at your business that I have a divine business and that divine business, if I don't get up and speak to people or if I don't get up and talk about the pe- what I do, that woman, that man, that person, if I don't get up, if I don't be uh, curvy and, and really talk about this podcast, somebody that need to hear what I need to say will not get help. If right. I don't do my part, I am called to help certain people. So it's all about the paradigm shift of how you look at yourself. And, and, I, and I have this inside of one of my courses called identity leadership. Is The first thing is, is who do you identify yourself to be? Because when you identify yourself to be a certain thing or a certain person, you wake up like him or her every day. Every yes. single day. So whether you, you're getting paid for it or not, you wake up. I wake up every day in the financial space in helping other financial professionals, whether you're in life insurance or whether you're in financial services, tax account. My job is to help them market their business so someone can build financial confidence when yes. they, they spread their knowledge. If they don't spread their knowledge, we're going to make bad decisions. We're going to take our 401k. We go, you know, we don't know all the strategies that are out there to wealth because guess what that financial person didn't know how to market her business and she's the one with the expertise so it's all again all about your mindset and your identity who do you identify yourself to be when you get that identity no one can take that from you absolutely and it's just so funny i don't know what it is this week but the, the term mindset has just been a reoccurring theme that i keep you know bumping into every single day and in my newsletter i have a weekly newsletter that goes out and that's the topic is mindset right uh, last week we had eric davis former u.s navy uh, seal who was a sniper uh trained chris kyle from the movie uh well he was in the movie american sniper right with i think bradley yes. cooper was yeah uh he was on there and it's you know he was talking about everything's mindset right um you know, I'm watching college basketball this year and I'm watching a kid, I'm a big Iowa Hawkeye fan and a kid named Luca Garza who came out of high school, wasn't highly touted. I mean, he was somewhat touted, but he was average, but you know, he's six eleven, kind of gawky, you know, what have you, but he went to work every day for the past four years. And he just got named uh, by sporting news, um, national player of the year for the second year in a row and nobody's done that since michael jordan and if you go and watch this kid and if you 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 dive into you know his life it's all about mindset the guy just continuously studies the game studies the history of the game Mm -hmm. make sure every little point pinpoint of the game is refined to where you know he is going to have a successful outcome but it goes back to that mindset right Nobody thought he would be national player of the year three years ago. Nobody thought he would be big 10 player of the year, you know, three years ago. And, but like you said, he did, it was in his head that he was going to be the best out there and he was going to do everything he could to do that. Is he the most talented? No, not by any means. Right. Is he as most athletic? No, but he refined every part of his game. So, and it's just so it, it, I love that you're talking about mindset because again, that's just, it's just a reoccurring theme for, for me this week. And I, you know, I appreciate you bringing that up. So thank you so you know, much. Let me add to what you just said. It's ordinary people doing extraordinary things. And one of the person that I admire and I literally wake up to most of the time and, and may he rest in peace is Kobe Bryant. And yeah. Kobe Ryan did an interview and and talk about how well he studied the game, just like you're just saying, but it's his daily schedule of how he spent his time. 
and and he knew he weren't the strongest in the game. So he, what he may need to do is get up early and work on strength, right? So he knew where his weaknesses and he knew where his strength is and he knew certain things that he has to do. I mean, just even in the interview with a helicopter, the reason why it wasn't like I'm rich, let me ca catch a helicopter. It was more, let me get there faster so I can mm -hmm. get in the gym before we even start working out yeah. and be out. So all, everything he he every single day, every move he make is intentional. There was mm -hmm. nothing that he do with his time that was not intentional. So, and it goes back, it goes back to mindset. And then you add the action to the mindset that every single thing that we do, if it's not in alignment with where we're going, it's a no. Yeah, no, Kobe's a great example. And he's a great example because, you know, when you, when you talk about his mindset, he checked his ego at the, at the door. As great as he was, he was that great because he checked his ego. And I say that because he studied not just the game, but he also reached out to his competition, to others. And, you know, there's, if you sit there and if you listen, if you go back to the funeral and the, uh, and the visitation and what have you, and listen to some of the people speak, especially Michael Jordan, right? Says Kobe would constantly call him and, you know, ask for pointers. How does he do this? What does he do? And, you know, these are people that is competition that, you know, in business, we don't do that. A lot of people don't do that. They're, they have too big of egos for whatever reason to reach out to their uh, industry and reach out to their competition. Like, well, I'm not going to talk to him. He's my competition or she's my competition. Why would I reach out to her? Well, why wouldn't you? You know what I mean? Well, you know, if you see somebody doing something well, regardless, you know, emulate it. I, there, there's a um, uh, there, uh, there's a coach that, you know, I know well, and I'm, I'm not going to mention his name because I don't want to make, you know, upset him on my show. Um, but, you know, you know, you hear the thing that insanity is banging your head against the wall over and over and doing the same thing. Right. Mm -hmm. that's, that's insanity. Stupidity. Well, this is what he says. Stupidity is watching someone else do it and not copying it. And I, yeah. and I, and I totally, I love that saying. I totally believe it. I was like, yeah, there's all these people doing it, but you don't want to do what they're doing because of your ego or whatever reason. That's just stupid. That's absolutely stupid. It so, is. Yeah. It is. And I want to just also add that, you know, that's the, the one, two, there are two things I want to really point out here. Number one is people say, well, I need to get motivated to do it. But what people don't understand, the motivation comes in the doing. You have mm -hmm. to do it first. And while you're doing it, if you're trying to lose weight and you say, okay, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to start losing weight. When you start seeing the process take place and you lose one or two pounds, that becomes your motivation. People are waiting to be motivated, but it's backwards. The exactly. motivation is in the doing, right? It's in the doing. Another principle that I really see here too is when we talk about Kobe Bryant and we talk about that young man you were just talking about, their su success people leave clues. And one of the clues that I identify with when it comes to successful people, it's not that they don't, we don't have problems. It's not like things don't happen. Like I defy the odds of being a single mom and having a six figure business and never use ads and run an entire business just using live videos, right? Mm -hmm. And one of the ways I was able to do that that successful people, they don't ponder in situation when it goes wrong, right? Yeah. So they do have issues just like everybody else, but they huh. don't stay in that situation. They don't stay, they don't ponder it in there. They're like, okay, here's the problem. How are we going to get out of this problem, right? And I think sometimes we wallow in that, that poor me state for so long. And that's yeah. what separates the man from the boy, the woman from the girl. But I think that piece right there of being successful and not staying in that state when things go wrong is also make you a superman or a superwoman. Yeah, absolutely agree with you 100%. So your business, Sherry Summers Unlimited, Let's talk about that. You, you, we've kind of touched on it here and there as we've been talking. Let's just kind of throw it out there. What do you do there and who do you help? Oh, awesome. So in this space of Sherry Summers Unlimited, I help financial professionals. I help them to make 100K or more consistently in the business. And when I say financial professionals, the, again, the people with the answers to build wealth, many times they struggle with marketing the business. So if they can't market their message and their wisdom and their knowledge cannot get out there into the universe. So when I come came along and I decided that, okay, I'm going to help this space because I was also, I am also a real estate investor. I also 
um, a life insurance agent. So I have been in this space helping these financial professionals spread that message mm -hmm. to, to the people who need to hear it. So do, do I need, what type of life insurance do I need? Or so, Cause there's somebody that show up in your nine to five and says, Hey, take this one. And you don't even know if that's the right <laughs> option for you. You're just going with what the whole company has. So they give me one option when there's a billion out there, but right. because you don't know, and that mark, that person with the knowledge not marketing yourself. So I created that space to help them make their first hundred K or more consistently. Awesome. So within your business, there's three, there's three things you do as a life coach, maybe as a business as well, but it's getting clarity around your brand, right? Generating Correct. leads and position Correct. yourself as the go-to expert. And how I think I may Correct. mention about it earlier is how you phrase it, master market monetized three, or I love it. It's like three, do you ever say three M's? Cause I think that's really cool. That's what you yes, that's what I say. Uh, okay. I want to say, I, I hope you say it. Cause I was, I was, that's what it is. It's pretty cool. So t let's start from the beginning. Tell me where do people have missteps in branding and what is one thing they can do to gain clarity like today? I love that. So the first thing is to figure out what is your movement? What I mean, like what mission are you on? What is your Martin Luther King? Oh, not my dance moves, but this is what nah, no, no. Nobody what is wants your to say that. <laughs> Nobody wants to know. So the first thing you're, you're yes, you have a, a business and everybody have a business. Everybody have a t-shirt business. Everybody have a life insurance business. There are 10 different life insurance clients, people that you can go to. But so to stand out from the crowd, you are on a mission. What is that? mission. Yes, it's to help people make better choices and peace of mind, but they go deeper than that. What is your story? That's the first mm -hmm. thing, right? And when you start figuring out what is your story and how that story came about, because many of the times it came about because mommy, I have a client right now. She came in life insurance business because her son, when her son died at 23 years old, got shot, they didn't have life insurance. So they had to use GoFundMe account and they felt some type of way using the GoFundMe account. So she make it her mission that a parent don't have to bury their son again because they weren't yeah. prepared. So that's her mission, right? So people resonate with her story of what happened with her son. They still haven't found out who, who, who killed him. And she has been that on a mission helping people make right choices when it comes to life right. insurance. So what is your mission? What And when you have that mission, how are you spreading that message out to the people who want to hear it? And that's when we, we talk about your mastery. You're mastering that message. That's all you're doing. People can, you know, everybody do the same thing. You're, but you're mastering yeah. that message. So the people who resonate with your story can raise their hand and say, I want to work with you. So every day you wake up and say, how can I become the master of spreading my yep. message? I agree with you 100%. I, I think I've said that like three or four times now, but, uh, <laughs> but you know, I, I, you're absolutely right. And, you know, I deal with a lot of people and I'm going to, you know, kind of jump on this is that, you know, you, when you sit down with them and the first thing I look at their business and mostly all the time, I look at what they do and I get into it and I've been with them for about 30 days. And I just said, you know what, you're white noise. You're the exact same as the guy down the street or the girl down the street. Mm -hmm. you're, the, you're the same and you have a great story to tell and you're not telling it. Why aren't right. you, why aren't you telling it? And I think we have been so trained by, you know, whatever, you know, just maybe it's the, the way we've been brought up, you know, in, in prior years is that, you know, Hey, we don't, we don't talk about that. Right. You know, that's a, yeah. that's a sign of weakness, but in reality is by showing your story, and if that story is a negative story and you've come out of it, that's actually a, the biggest sign of strength you could ever display, right? It's easy to go get a nine to five job and, mm -hmm. you know, and, and work and come home and be upset and have a couple of drinks. It's hard to lose a job, lose your house. Like you said, be late on your mortgage, be late on your car payment and flip that script and be successful or, you know, you do have a successful business that's been around for 40 years and there's some differentiators that you're not talking about. It doesn't matter. You need to display those messages. You need to display that brand. And, and by not doing that, you're not just doing yourself a disservice, right? Because there's a motivation in that, I believe, but you're doing your business a disservice as well. Correct. And the people you're called to serve that are up late at night looking for you, looking for the service you offer, can't find you because you're you're caught up in your own self. Like I can't go live. Like I remember when um, I got went through my divorce and I'm seven thousand dollars behind my mortgage, and they're coming to get my car on the fifteenth. 
And I don't even have, I, I'm overdrafting my account 10, 10 times a month. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, well, how am I go a single mom now? How am I going? I left my $42,000 police job. How am I going to make money? So right. I picked up my iPhone and went live for 60 days straight. Went live talking about finances, talking about business, on what the level of what I know. And that's when I made my first $12,000, right? Wow. Just picking up the phone and going live. And then got that got me out of debt. And then my business you know, took off from there, you know? So no one was coming to save me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wasn't coming. Yeah. They weren't yeah. coming. Yeah, so I awful. had kicked in the bandwidth and get it going. Well, mm -hmm. let's talk about that. So when marketing your brand and generating leads, you believe in the power of leveraging video, right? I, I, I know that. And you just bring, you brought that up a couple of times. So how yeah. does Sherry get people to put themselves in front of the camera? They, they, you know, just, I, I can't do that. I love that because I get that all the time. My introverts who are listening right now, like, oh my God, I, I can't tell me. <laughs> believe it or not, <laughs> believe it or not. I, I, yeah, it, it is taking me a long time to do this. It, uh, you know, it, I mean, if you've, if you've watched, let's listen to the show. We For two seasons, we've just been straight audio. And people keep saying, Kerfee, you need to go on video. You need to put this on video. It sounds, it's it's a great show. Put it on video. I'm like, man, I don't know. I don't want, you know, I don't, I don't want to do it. And if you've been following me, you can see that I've been doing a lot more video. So yes. it, it's hard. It's hard, right? Because, I mean, regardless of what, you, what people think you look like, I think a lot of people, I mean, I don't, you know, I don't see it, you know, so it's, it's mm -hmm. kind of funny. Um, but, you know enough about me <laughs> let's get back to my <laughs> question uh i just go because hey i'm one of those people i'm an introvert believe it or not um yeah but and you probably say no he's not but <laughs> tell me <laughs> how do you get people in front of the camera well i think again going back to the mindset right number one we're living in a in a, in a space where people want to know who they're paying right? Who they're paying. You used to be, you just paid for something and let it go. But now with all the politics and all the drama and everything that's going to work, they want to know where the money's going. Mm -hmm. So number, so if you want someone to pay you, just like you, you want to know what their character is, who, who they like, you know, and all this stuff. So when you're in front of the camera, the people can get a perceived to get a better understanding of who they're coaching with ahead of time, right? They kind of test the word of the person. So that's the, the what, that's the benefit of being on camera and the characteristics of the nuance of that person, you get to en enjoy that person first before paying for their service or what they offer is number right, one. Right. But number two, the other part, the person was actually in front of the camera, going back to mindset, you are there to deliver a value or a knowledge that a lot of people may not know right? You're there to deliver something that they would have to go somewhere else to find it, or they probably wouldn't have found it, right? right. So you're there. Whenever I come into the space, I'm coming into the space with a mindset that I have to get this knowledge out. I have to get this. I cannot tell you how many times I could go on camera and say something like, hey, don't forget to do your annual reporting, or don't forget your PPP or EIDL and how you can mm -hmm. use it and leverage your business. There's something in that nature or talk about visibility and and someone will be like, oh my gosh, Sherry, thank you so much. I, I never, even, I forgot about that or I thought about that. So you have a divine business. So it's not about your gifts is not for you. It's to help other people. But yep. when you get caught up in, oh my God, it's me, it's me, it's me. People know. People don't. People just want to know how can you help me. Exactly. <laughs> they don't care about anything exactly. else. How can you help help me? And if you can help them. They could care less how you show up. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Well, that's just sales one on one. And you know, you, you like and I always say when I do my sales training, you know, and I have and it's funny because I have companies where I have, you know, some great sales guys and they're amazing, but they play the numbers game, right? It is about them, but they're just an, they're a different breed, right? Where they're just I'm going to, you know, I'm going to make 60 something calls today and da, da, da. They just, and they don't really care. And it just kind of falls through, but there's Correct. really no uh, long-term value there. And you can kind of see that with their career. Right. And then they'll kind of dry up that and they'll move on to the next one or what have you. And I said, that's great, but there's always a burnout with that. And I, I said, my job is to take that 60 calls to get, you know, uh, 10 appointments and let's get that down to maybe 20 calls to get 12 appointments. And out of those 12 appointments, instead of get one to two sales let's get six sales out of that right that's that's the what i call find the peach because i'm from georgia you know when you're sitting down with somebody and you're having that conversation you're going through the sales process it's finding where you can help them that your competition's not find the peach don't you know don't get in that apples to apples comparison find the peach so 
<laughs> I love that find a peach. And I'm going to add to it as well. Like one of the great things about me, I don't even do the sales call because they see me on camera so much. So by the time I get off camera, it's like, okay, where can I sign? <laughs> right. So they, they well, you got that our... personality. <laughs> so they, so the, 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 the well, look at me, I get like, no one's signing crap with me. No, I'm joking. <laughs> no, you're amazing. You're <laughs> TR. You're amazing. So when you're on camera uh, you know, and this, and, and here's the thing, I grew my entire business using live video. So they have been uh, in Jamaica with me. I take them with me wherever I go. So I open up my home to in, not in the Kim Kardashian way, but I open up my life to them because even in my times when I wasn't successful or going through something, I would document how I got through it. So I was, I would show them step by step of how I got, got through it, how I end up here, how I end up on this stage and how I did this with Tony Robbins or how I did this with, so they'll come with me on my journey right. and they'll see me writing something down and then saying, I want to speak internationally. And then two or three months later, they will see me in the Philippines, you know? So it's, yeah. it's they're coming with me. So it's, what's your authority platform and go after because uh, the only thing you're marketing is your message. That's yeah, it. Absolutely. Well, and I think monetization, can we jump into that one? Because uh, yeah. we're about 40 minutes in the show. Um, I think monetization or getting what you're worth is extremely difficult for anyone starting out, right? Um, <laughs> trying to understand, okay, this is what I do. And especially the people that you're coaching, you know, how, you know, how do I determine what that value is? You know, was it always easy for you to really figure that out? And, how, you know, how do you help people figure that out? Kirfi, this is this another this is another amazing one. It's so funny because I'm good I'm at doing, these questions, aren't I? No, I'm <laughs> no, this no. It's it's here's why it's so amazing because again, it go back to what mindset, right? I I have a forty two the forty two dollar. Guess program. what the hey? Guess what the name of the show is going to be, right? <laughs> mindset, because I because you your mindset cannot go higher than your money. So your wherever your mindset first has to arrive before your money arrives. So what am, why why do I mean like by that? You, it's you, the person who believe that you can. I can sell a forty two dollar program that I was selling back when I first started five years ago. Sell that exact same program for a thousand dollars. Yeah. Nothing changed, but the fact that I have the confidence to sell it now at a thousand. Yep. The value Absolutely. doesn't change. It still will make you money. It's still, matter of fact, it's it's guaranteed to make you 2K or more consistently in your business if you've never made your first 2K yet. But the value didn't change. There's only thing changes. I got more mature. I got more confident and I, I have some bandwidth. So it was really my mind. It was yeah. really my mind. So if so, if I had started sent off at 2000, I could have. But my mind had to grow, not the money. My mind had to develop. So you're developing your own mindset and beliefs and thoughts yeah. first, and then your money will arrive. Absolutely. And I think one of the, one, one of the things I've recognized, especially when I used to deal with startups and, uh, you know, people just getting into maybe solopreneurs is, you know, you ask them, you know, well, how much do you want to make? And they start answering with, you know, well, you know, I got this bill and that bill. And I'm thinking, well, if you're just... And your mindset is, hey, I'm going to make enough money to pay my bills, then that's all the hell you're ever going to make. Why yeah. can't you think bigger than that? Right. And, and you know yeah. what I say? I, that's the way I used to be. Right. Yeah. What, you know, man, I got to, you know, I mean, she, I went from here, my story, I went from a big six figure CFO, chief operating officer of an eight figure company and lost my job. And I started my own business. Um, I had this idea of, you know, being a, uh, you know, a business coach, but more of a, um, outsource consultant and it was difficult and the first thing that my mind went to was I got to pay my bills and I started creating my value around that my product value was hey what covers the mortgage what covers the car payment what covers yeah. my insurance right that's how, and guess what that's where I stayed <laughs> and I totally, and it's just like in business, right? It, you know, oh, you know, this year we want to do more. Well, more ain't a freaking objective, man. You want to do 7 million? Great. Let's do 7 million. We can do it, but we got to reverse engineer it. But if you're just here to pay the bills, that's all you're ever going to make. 
And I and I'm going to echo what you just said, because of what changed for me, I would say when I started getting booked to speak on stage um, and during that process is I would fly first class when I got to the to the airport where it's international, there is a VIP person picking me up and then that VIP person is taking me to um, the hotel before I speak and I'm like, man, this is a life. <laughs> Because this little Jamaican country girl wasn't used to this. Right, so, right. And they're picking me up. And then I have an assistant that traveled with me and other people that travel with me. Uh, and when I went through that experience, I said, I want this all the time. Right. So creating an experience says, because yeah. number one, I know my stuff will make you money. So that's hands down. I'm a revenue coach. At, it's all about money and mindset. So that's clear. I'm clear on that. I'm confident on that. But the part of me, again, monetization, raising your price is I had to go through that experience first yeah. to feel that I was valuable. So to the listeners, I encourage you that whatever your five-year self is, go ahead and experience that now, now. Leave your five-year self now. Make decision from what your five-year self will do who you identify your five-year self to be. So if you identify yourself to be in that big house, go house hunting. Let's go shopping. It's fun. It's free. Because once you create that experience, I have an eight-year-old son and I'm taking him to Mexico and he's like, how are we getting there? And I'm like, on a plane? What do you mean? He's like, no, are we flying <laughs> first class? Are we yeah, a boy. <laughs> Eight years old. So he's already embedded in his mind what his life to be. And again, that's not for everyone. But the point is, if, if you're going to do it, do it big. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. 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 So have you, how have you, and so you've done video, you said that's how you, 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 you did your monetization. How, how have you evolved on video? I mean, if you go back and look at your first video, you look like, you're like, Oh my gosh. <laughs> tell, tell me how you have evolved. <laughs> Why? So you start with what's in your hand, right? What did I say? I, I iPhone, I, I think it was the iPhone six plus that was in my hand. <laughs> time so when well, you start what's in your hands because we, we don't make excuses right and we don't count commitment we just count transactions so i just literally decided that okay this was in my hand and i had an iphone so the iphone is what i, I went with I, I and now i have i'm looking at you in two different screens i have a logitech all that stuff right. but all of that did not come it evolve over time so i was just using what's in my hand and trying again going in finance keep your overhead costs low but increase in your incomes that are coming in yeah so you start with what's in your hands whatever is in your hands that's what you use yeah absolutely that's great hey i've had a blast today and you've <laughs> yeah. been phenomenal we've been 45 minutes in already yet, and this has been just great uh i hope you've had fun uh, I did. <laughs> but before we end the show i want to play the game get to know sherry if that's all right with you yes i love it <laughs> right, so i'm going to ask you 10 questions and you have to say the first answer that comes to your mind as fast as you can. Okay. Ooh. Right. So yeah, I did. I, I didn't prep you for this. Right. <laughs> so you better be ready. Are you ready? Yes. All right. What color is your toothbrush? Blue. Blue. Why is it blue? Is it always blue or do you mix it up? That's the next one. I was in the, it's like five and you just pick it. <laughs> <laughs> so you buy five packs because like, i travel a lot so i just buy it and they're inside of ready to go on the next plane <laughs> if you could trade lives with anyone who would it be and why i would like to trade life with oprah <laughs> <laughs> right. right and 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 why because i know uh uh, Stedman Graham and amazing, amazing guy. He has a book called Identity Leadership as well. And, and um, just his knowledge of listening to him is just beautiful. What TV sitcom family would you be a part of? Ooh, Saved by the Bell. <laughs> oh my gosh. I love it. I love it. Oh, and, we, and we just lost Screech like two weeks ago, right? Yeah. Uh, that was, yeah, uh, that that was, was like kind of, uh, you know, unexpected. Yeah, and I used to rush home to watch that show. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I love that show. That was like my favorite show. My uh, I, you know, and I will sit there and say, sometimes I'll watch old. If I'm really bored, I'll watch old episodes. So yeah, I probably yeah. shouldn't say that. <laughs> What's the last song you listened to? Beyonce who run the world. <laughs> Do you listen to that a lot or is it just... a lot? A lot. That's is my, that... that's the song I come out on stage in. All that. Yeah, that's that, is favorite. that your theme song? <laughs> that's my theme song. I have to admit. No, that's, you know, I think that's great. You know what? 
I think everybody should have a theme song. And I think that's we, we, here. We're talking about mindset again, right? I think that's really important. And um, I know you, you probably, you know, Heather Monahan, who's on LinkedIn quite a bit, right? She's a big sales yeah. coach. Yeah. So she's been on the show and that's one of the, her whole, uh, you know, thought process is you create, you know, changing your life by creating a marketing plan. Cause that's what she was a big marketing. Right. And, you know, in every marketing plan, there's like a theme song or there's music. So what is your theme? And so, yes, I love I that. I, I knew when you said that, that's what I go. I know that's what that is. So that's what gets her pumped and motivated. And it goes back to identity. How do you see yourself? Right. Yep. It goes back to everything we just talked about. Mine's 50 cent. Don't push me. So there you go. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Who's your celebrity crush besides the guy from hashtag biz with beard? <laughs> oh my, my celebrity, my celebrity crush. He passed away, of course. Oh. Uh, um, Wakanda. Um, what is his name? Chad. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. He's yeah. He, I didn't get to meet him, but yeah. Oh, Maybe that's good. Yeah. That was my celebrity crush from yeah. Black Panther. <laughs> yeah. What are two things you would change about yourself? I, I, to be, I'm very self-driven and motivated. I need to so, relax. <laughs> like, <laughs> I need to be normal. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm such a go-getter that, that my significant other, thank God we're balanced each other out. It's like, That's we're, awesome. you're good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so I'm very driven. So I need yeah, to. Yeah, I, I would, I would, yeah, I'm kind of that way. And like, I, I'm horrible. I, and I teach it, you know, hey, you need sleep and stuff like that. And I preach it. But man, I just don't do it like I should. <laughs> it's yes, like, yes. I get little things in my head and then all of a sudden I'm on the laptop. The next thing I know, it's like 1230, 1 o'clock at night. I'm like, well, shoot, I'm going to get up at five in the morning, 530. This isso not going to work out for me. Tomorrow's going to be horrible. So that's one thing exactly. I would change myself. Like you said, relax. That's a good one. And then the second thing I just want to point it out is sometimes I see things in people that they don't even see themselves because they haven't arrived yet. Mm -hmm. So I have to reverse back to get to their level to pull them back up. So I, I need to change it. Like I would talk from their, like I said, from their five-year self and they don't even see their one-year self, you know? So yes, that's really important. Yeah. That's very, gosh, we can go down that rabbit hole because that, that's a good, that's a good, <laughs> good one. Apple products. Yeah or nay? Oh yeah. Everything You're we big... need Apple. Awesome. Everything. <laughs> What's your favorite sound? Sound? Sound, favorite sound as in song or as but any, my favorite any sound do you have like a sound that's I'm right of course reggae I'm gonna say reggae reggae sound. okay yeah that's I'm good. Jamaica yes good reggae can get me going <laughs> it's, it's my energy mine is Matthew McConaughey's voice or something <laughs> <laughs> I I have this uh yeah I have the call map that I listen to to put me to sleep and mm -hmm. I listen to Matthew McConaughey tell the story of wonder every single night before I go to bed and oh, I know wow. that's probably something for you to admit, but it's like there's something about his voice and I have never finished that story because it just, it just puts me right to sleep. So. That's oh, wow. Favorite. That's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> my my man soul. crush, right? <laughs> yes. Aliens, <laughs> real or not? Not. Okay. What's your go-to dance move? Last question. Oh, my go-to dance move is the butterfly. Back in the days from Jamaica. <laughs> There's a but do the butterfly. <laughs> awesome. Well, hey, Sherry, thank you for taking your time out of your busy schedule <laughs> and coming on the show today. And thank you for sharing you sharing with us your life experience and your knowledge. I truly, truly appreciate it. And it's been an extreme pleasure for me. So thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited. And if there's anything I can do, just go yeah. to jointsherry.com. Yeah. So yeah, is there, let's talk about it. Is there anything you want to plug uh, before we end the show? Just yes. Um, yeah. The, my website is called it's its sherry.com. And I have a group for all, all things marketing at join sherry.com. Okay. Well, there you have it, friends, the talented Sherry Summers from Sherry Summers Unlimited. God bless. And thank you for coming on the show, Sherry. Thank you for having me. Yeah. I want to remind everyone to subscribe to the show on your favorite podcast platform and then leave a five-star review on the platform if you've enjoyed today's show. And as always, I want to say it again, I'm always grateful for all of our listeners who tune in from all over the world. Do not forget that you can pick up our award-winning beard products now called Hashtag Biz and ACS and Wolfpack Gear and other Hashtag Biz with the Beard merchandise on my website at acsexec.com. 
And there you have it. Another show is in the books, but never fear. The beard will always be here. And until next episode, same beard time, same beard channels. Thank you for listening to hashtag biz with the beard podcast. Remember every genius idea starts with a stroke of a beard. Have a successful day.